Amsterdam featured a group of friends who looked into the death of a U.S. senator in the 1930s. It was written and directed by David O. Russell, who also worked on the movies American Hustle and Silver Linings Playbook. Amsterdam, starring Christian Bale, Margaret Robbie, and John David Washington, offers a complex narrative that demands further examination. The movie by Russell, which is based on a real historical incident, contains a lot of moving components. The complete story of the Committee of Five, whether they ever existed, and the reasons Tom and Libby medicated Valerie throughout the years even though she didn't need it are all addressed in this comprehensive guide to Amsterdam's denouement. Did they really exist, as the Committee of Five expounded? A group of wealthy, affluent businessmen called the Committee of Five sought to choose a fascist dictator to lead the U.S. government, imitating Germany and Italy at the time. General Gil Dillenbeck was to be the leader of this effort. His speech at Burt and Harold's reunion would have ignited a veteran-led coup that would have altered the course of history and placed the U.S. with Benito Mussolini and Adolf Hitler in World War II. Additionally, the Committee of Five supported sterilization clinics in an effort to maintain white supremacy. Of course, Amsterdam tinkers with the truth. The group of five in the movie is named after the same named committee that the Second Continental Congress John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, Robert Livingston, and Roger Sherman formed to compose the Declaration of Independence. This is the sole instance of the body of five that history is aware of, and Russell probably adopted the name in Amsterdam to act in opposition to the actual committee. How and why Bert, Valerie, and Howard agreed in Amsterdam. Them. In their own culture, Bert, Valerie, and Howard were all misfits. Howard experienced a lot of bigotry as a black man. Bert was made fun of by his wife's family for being half Jewish, and Valerie led a bohemian lifestyle that upset her wealthy family. Living in Amsterdam gave them the opportunity to be themselves without being constrained by social expectations or institutional prejudice. As a result of their tight connection, they made a pledge to always be there for one another no matter what. The agreement was based on Bert, Howard, and Valerie's unwavering faith in one another and their commitment to always have one another's backs. Their alliance and friendship were finally solidified by their participation in World War I and the sense of freedom they had while they were together. They had a deeper understanding of one another than anybody before them, and they were judgment-free buddies. They finally violated their agreement only when Bert decided it was time to fly back to the States to restart his romance with Beatrice. Bert came to the conclusion that if he could experience this joy and freedom with his friends, he could do the same with his wife. What does it mean when Amsterdam's trio sings the nonsense song? There is nothing like the camaraderie between Bert, Harold, and Valerie. They even have a unique tune that is unique to them as a result. It is called the nonsense song by the group since that is precisely what it is, rubbish. It has three primary words that each singer sings with their individual melody, although at first, the music doesn't seem to make much sense. The absurd tune, nevertheless, has a deeper significance. Each character brings something to the table as an offering of something significant, therefore it is born out of giving. It was something that was exclusively theirs, a song that united them and that no one else could take away from their time together. The gibberish song built the connection between Bert, Harold, and Valerie in Amsterdam, which is at the center of the movie. Because it captures the essence of their friendship and makes them happy, Bert, Harold, and Valerie sing it. What precisely did Bill Meekins see before he passed away? Even though Bill Meekins was only briefly shown on screen, the murder of Bill Meekins is the main conflict of Amsterdam. While his death is a mystery throughout the entire movie, the biggest mystery may really be the reason why he was slain. It turns out that Meekins was in the vehicle when Mussolini ran a man over with it. By that time, Meekins also knew what Mussolini was planning, and the senator planned to divulge his knowledge at the Burt and Harold's veteran reunion. Mussolini's name darkly inspired Milhouse and The Simpsons. Mussolini couldn't let Meekins off the hook so simply after learning everything that he had. Harold, Bert, and Valerie, who had witnessed too much, including the sterilization clinics and Meekin's hired murderer, may have suffered the same fate. Why Tom and Libby pretended Valerie had a nerve disorder. Although Tom and Libby first gave the impression that they were taking care of Valerie because of her nerve condition, they were actually to blame for the decline in her health. Valerie was an obstacle for Tom and Libby, who seemed to relish their outrageous money and status as committee of five members. Valerie was more of a free spirit who desired to be independent of her family. She had broken free from Tom and Libby's grasp, moving to Amsterdam and leading a bohemian lifestyle. But once they were back in the US, the couple could control Valerie. Medication would make her appear unstable, take away her physical autonomy, and make it impossible for anybody to take her seriously because she was unwell, which was ultimately what caused her vertigo to show over time. Ailments would also hinder Valerie from learning more about the schemes Tom and Libby were hatching around Amsterdam. Why Bert refuses to travel with Harold and Valerie to Amsterdam. At the conclusion of Amsterdam, Harold and Valerie came to the realization that going back to the place where their love first took off would be the only way they could be together and truly be themselves without being constrained. Bert, on the other hand, had the option of accompanying them but declined because of the rising of the Nazis. Because he is half-Jewish, traveling to Europe at the time would have put him in risk. 
The fact that the trio made an agreement, however, gives reason to believe that they will eventually be reunited, even if it isn't in Amsterdam as they had anticipated. Thanks for watching, and if you are new to channel, subscribe and click the bell for latest videos of Media Breakdown.